Nearly 2,000 years ago, the angels revealed to the wondering and trembling shepherds the glorious news that there was born that very day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You see, these were not ordinary shepherds. They watched the sheep that would be sacrifices on the altar of the temple for the sins of the people. And these shepherds were considered religious outcasts because their job made it impossible to keep the rabbinic law. How appropriate that the angels gave the most glorious message ever heard to them first. These sheep under the sentence of death, as if the angels said, your time for dying is almost over, for the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is born tonight. How appropriate he gave the announcement to these outcast shepherds, for man had been spiritual outcast ever since the Garden of Eden, and Jesus had come to open the way home. There are thousands of human schemes for social and political improvement. Many of them are very good, but they will ultimately fail because they are not dealing with man's basic disease. They change the circumstances, but leave the man untouched. They alter the surroundings, but have no power to change and transform character. If mankind is to be saved at this tragic hour of history, if the world is to be transformed, if we're to have peace, then salvation must come from a source outside of man. Christmas emphasizes the glorious truth that what man is unable to do for himself, Jesus Christ has done for him. Man could not save himself because he could not deliver himself from the guilt, power, and the consequences of sin. Man was in rebellion against God and had no terms of peace to offer that could be acceptable by God. Only God himself could make peace. And this he did through the atoning sacrifice of his son, through the merits of Christ's life and death, we are offered full and free forgiveness. Christmas tells us what it cost God to save the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Christ is God's great Christmas gift to the world. The scripture says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. However, the hope that was given to those shepherds on that first Christmas morning is available only to those who believe. To know the pardon, joy, and peace and power which comes through Christ, man must personally receive him by faith. Faith must be real if the heart is to be changed. There are many of you watching at this moment who long for peace in your own heart at this Christmas time. You too can meet God at the foot of the cross and find the peace that you've searched for so long. You say, what do I have to do? Well, you have to turn from your sins, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, commit your life to him. He will come into your heart. And this Christmas, you can spend knowing the Christ of Christmas for the first time. Whatever you need, Jesus can meet it. Whatever the desires and longings of your heart, Christ can touch your life and transform you and make you a new person. I'm going to ask you to make that commitment and that decision tonight. What a wonderful time of the year to say yes to Jesus Christ and let him change your life and change many of the circumstances that you find yourself in now. Now, I'm going to ask you to follow along a little prayer with me that I would like to pray. I want to pray for you right now and with you. And while we are praying, you make that heart commitment to Jesus Christ and he will receive you and he can transform you from the inside out. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank thee for the glorious Christmas gift that you have given us in Jesus Christ. We thank thee for the power that he has to transform our lives and to bring peace to our troubled hearts. And I pray just now that those that are watching will pray this little prayer. Oh God, I have sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm willing to turn from my sins and I receive you as Savior, and I confess Christ as Lord. From this moment on, I want to follow him. Amen. I read the other day that there are 42 million people in the world who are blind. Health authorities estimate that from all causes, half a million children become irreversibly blind around the world each year. And this is a great tragedy and many people and countries and health agencies are working to turn it around. A tragedy of equal or greater proportion though is the spiritual blindness that people have. Because the Bible says you have two sets of eyes. You have physical eyes in which you can see and you have spiritual eyes. And you can see physically but you may not be able to see spiritually. And spiritual blindness affects everyone in this audience. 
There are thousands of people here tonight that you can see me up here, but you are spiritually blind. And it's a blindness that keeps you from really knowing God. Now, Bartimaeus was a blind man. And he came out of uh, the little place where he had spent the night. And he never had any hope that he'd ever be able to see. And he would go outside the gate of Jericho and he would beg from the people that passed by. People on the way to market or people coming to their business that day. And he would say, help the blind, help the blind, help the blind, help the blind. He had his cane. He had an old shaggy coat. He'd begged some bread from a woman as he had gone on his way and he got some milk. And there he sat with other blind people and other beggars. And they were begging, hoping that the people would throw them a little bit of money or give them something. And so I look at Bartimaeus and I see myself or I see you. The Bible says he is blind spiritually. And so I look at Bartimaeus and I see myself or I see you. The Bible says he is blind spiritually. And our world leaders are groping. I listen to some of these things on television from some of our world leaders and I'm amazed at the spiritual blindness. And I have talked to some of them privately and, and I, I just, I, I want to reach over and grab them and shake them and tell them that they need Christ because Christ could go open their eyes. And I think only the, the true believers really know what's wrong with the world because what's wrong with the world is a spiritual problem. Now this Bartimaeus could not see his rags, he couldn't see his filth, he couldn't see even beauty. And from time to time we read of someone living in a house or apartment that's filled with empty containers and refuse and garbage. And the person living there may appear to lead a perfectly normal life. And they're well dressed. I know a home like that right now where the lady is well dressed, uh, the husband is, is a doctor, and they are respectable, they're fine people, and when you see them out, you, you think they're the most wonderful couple in the world, but if you ever get into their house, it is a mess. It looks like a hog pen. And that's the way it is with so many of us. We appear all right on the outside, but down in our hearts and in our souls, we know that something is wrong. And for some reason, the person doesn't seem to even care. The scripture says, but the natural man, that's the ordinary man, the man before he comes to Christ, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. And it seems foolish for me to stand here and tell you that because Jesus Christ died on a cross 2,000 years ago and rose from the dead, that that can have an impact on your life today and now and give you assurance and peace and joy that you never knew before and help settle many of the problems and relationships that you face and give you a burden for your fellow man. But it's true. And some people would call that foolish. The Bible says that the pro proclamation of the gospel is foolishness to them that perish. 